My lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very warm welcome to the start of a brand new series on Transport Fever 2. For those of you who've seen the close of the previous series, you'll know what this series is going to be all about and what the USP is for this series. What we're going to try and do is see how we can get on with a passenger only series. Now, passenger only, obviously that refers to your trains, of course, it's what the game's all about. But obviously it will include buses, trams, and potentially aircraft as well. So here's our map. It's a pristine map. We have started in 1950. I've never really started so late before, so I wanted to see what it would be like to start a little bit later on. So. The year is 1950. In the pre-game settings I've made a few tweaks and changes, obviously I've gone through the mods and added in stuff that's going to be useful or relevant or what I might want to make use of. And I've removed all of the United States train mods because we've done the United States last time out and me being British I felt it was time to return back to the UK so we have a lot of UK train mods for this series once again. In terms of other mods that we've got enabled there's a few script mods such as the cash flow mod, the realistic train breaking mod, the mod that limits your track gradients, how much gradient you have on your rail track to make that a little bit more realistic. We used that last time out if you remember so that's back in once again. And I've also put in a lot of the asset mods, so if we wanted to do some custom work and some detailing, then we certainly could do that. The map itself is a large map. It's, I believe, 1 to 3 ratio, so we've gone for a long and relatively thin map. We've got UK town names, and as you can patently see, right in front of you. It is back in the temperate climate. So what I'm going to do now is just bring up the user interface. Everything is paused. You'll see a little bit of money has been spent and that's because I accidentally deleted the wrong thing because what I've done before I started recording the episode in the introduction is I've just scoured the map and any industry has been removed and then just to tidy things up, all of the link roads to the industries, they've also been removed. The intercity connections, the main connections as the game calls them, they've remained. And the reason I had to spend a bit of money is because I accidentally deleted a segment of a main city to city connection. So I had to rebuild it to remove the warning from the top of the screen. So let's zoom out so we can get an appreciation and an overview of the map. And we'll go through and look at all our cities. You'll notice the fields from where the farm industries were, they're still in place. Obviously it does cost money to bulldoze those, so that's why I've opted not to do that. We could go in temporarily, we could turn on the no cost mod and then get rid of those. Or we could just leave them if, well, we'll make a decision on that. It's, they're not doing any harm, at least not yet. So here we go then. So in terms of our towns and cities, we have Hull, so that starts off with 201 residents. And then to the northwest of there, we have Rugby with 204. To the, to the east of Rugby is Thurrock with 305. And to the east of Fulwick is Staveley with 308. Then heading further north we have a bit of a Yorkshire contingent here. We have Leeds with 94 and Sheffield with 109. Then we head over to Cumbria and we have Carlisle with 148. On the river's edge we have Lowestoft. As we cross the river over to the western side we have Warminster. 146 residents. On the eastern side we have Boston, 95 residents. Sandwiched between the two but a little bit to the north is the city of Poole with 317 residents. Tucked over behind this little hillside is the town of Neaton with 200 residents. As we cross the hillside we come to Dunstable 
143 residents and then it's a short hop up to Chorley with 232 residents and then rounding us off we have Wigan in the far north with 254 residents and last but not least the town of Stafford with 259 residents. Right, I'll leave Stafford's window open so we can talk about this. Another change I've made in the pre-game settings is the effect of cargo on town growth has been turned off so it's been set to zero. Not that we can give them any cargo because we have no industries to speak of whatsoever. I've improved or increased I should say the weighted impact of both public and private transportation they've been set to the highest possible value i think it might be 100 percent it might be higher i'm not sure what the what the figure was whatever it was on the slider they've been bumped all the way to the right for maximum impact traffic and emissions and town and city con sorry station congestion have been left as default so obviously because of that it is incumbent on us to make sure we can provide some good transportation links both public and private naturally there are some private transportation links to start off with you have your main city connections as we can see snaking across the map hopefully we don't stumble across any industry connections that i've missed but i can't see any so it's not all going to be about trains of course we will connect them up with road networks as well and we could look at perhaps building some sort of motorway that divides the map between east and west we'll run it from Wigan and we'll likely come all the way down to Hull in terms of what I've got planned for the rail service well we're gonna have quite a few competing services so to speak and that's what you get with a lot of passenger services around the world you wouldn't just have a train that goes Thuddock and Rugby and then that goes another one goes from Thuddock to Hull or Thuddock to Staveley and so on and so forth. You might have one that say starts in lower stuff, hits Carlisle, hits Leeds, hits Thuddock, hits Hull and then you might have one that also starts in lower stuff, comes into Carlisle but diverges across to Sheffield and then down to Rugby and then in Thuddock you might have one that runs Rugby to Hull to Staveley up to Leeds and Carlisle and back to Thurrock. Basically what I'm getting at is we're going to have services that are almost in competition with one another because there will be overlaps in terms of their destinations, what towns they're servicing, where they're heading. So then it will be down to the passenger to determine which service suits their needs the best. In the long term the aim would be to have a high speed mainline service and in terms of planning for the mainline in my head as it stands right now and I've not gone into the detail on this so we may have to adapt and change this as we approach but the idea would be we'd come from Hull and the mainline itself would run maybe Hull into Thurrock into Carlisle then lower stuff over the river maybe head straight for Poole Dunstable and Wigan and then as we get into the modern era the 2000s 2010 and so forth what we could look at having is an express mainline that runs roughly the same way as our generic or more traditional mainline but perhaps calls it a fewer stops so we might originate in Hull once again and maybe this time we would bypass Thurrock but hit Lower Stoft into Poole, bypass Dunstable this time and go to Wigan. So we'd go Wigan, Poole, Lower Stoft and Hull. And that way if somebody's wanting to get from Wigan to Hull, so if they want to cross the expanse of the map, they can do it a lot more directly without calling in at some of these other towns on the way. And again, that's quite a common thing especially in the United Kingdom I mean where I live for instance uh, when I want to get the train into London should I want to do that I got several options to choose some there's a stopping services that would obviously pick me up at my local station and then call at maybe five six seven stations 
on the way down to London or there is an express service where I would obviously get on at my local town and it might stop at just one other station on the way down to London and the difference in travel time is about 20-25 minutes so if you just want to get there and you don't want to be dealing with a start and stop then you can use the express so aiming to do something similar I'm not sure if the AI pathfinding when it comes to how they uh, the algorithm for determining the population's choice of trains I'm not sure how uh, well it will take to that but that's the idea much like previous series we do have this one on easy mode simply because we don't have that cargo supply chain to fall back on um, in my experience it's the cargo that is the backbone of your industry that's where you make your money long haul freight can make you millions and millions per delivery we don't have that option this time out it's purely passengers so by setting it to easy mode we should have a bit of slack when it comes to how our trains perform and I think that's all we need to discuss for the introduction uh, so I think we'll leave it here for this episode I know it's been brief it's about 10 minutes but I wanted to get an introduction out of the way before we started any building proper so I hope you are looking forward to this series. I think it'll be quite interesting. I don't know how long the series will run for. It might be something of a mini-series, maybe 10 to 15 episodes. It could be a, a traditional full-length sort of series where you're looking at 35, 40, maybe even longer in terms of the amount of episodes as well. For this series, because we've started later on, we're going to have the date speed set to, I think, maybe one half between a half and regular one time speed and we can determine that as time starts to progress pardon the expression because we don't want to be spending too long in a particular era and you know racing through episodes without unlocking anything new for instance but at the same time we've started late on so we don't want to suddenly blink and find ourselves in 1998 and we've only got three services running so we'll see which one works best for us in terms of pacing, I think. And like, yeah, like I said, other than that, I think that covers everything I wanted to discuss during the introductory episode. We'll start episode one uh, in, it should be uploaded in a couple of days time and I hope you're looking forward to it. It's a challenge I'm looking forward to getting stuck into and it'll be interesting to see where it takes us. Obviously I can't offer you a cab ride today because, well, Oh no, I suppose I could do a cab ride of sorts. We could see if there's anybody travelling between the two, between any two cities and we could follow along with them as a cab ride of sorts. But I'm not sure if we have anybody on the connection roads. Maybe they haven't generated yet. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll not bother with the, with the cab ride outro today, but obviously that will be reinstated forthwith. So thank you very much, uh, first of all, to all my Patreon supporters. Your support and generosity is deeply appreciated, so thank you very much. Um, as I said, I hope you're looking forward to the series. Uh, I welcome your comments in the comment section down below. Let me know, I mean, have you tried anything similar on Transport Fever 2? How's it worked out for you? Anything to look out for going forward, so on and so forth. For now, though, ladies and gentlemen, all that remains for me to say is, as always, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.